What's up guys? Welcome to my Balanced Druid Guide for Legion Patch 7.1.5. Now in this guide I'm going to go over your spells and abilities, your talents, your artifact traits and paladin choices, and your stat priority, and then your single target and AoE rotation, as well as demonstrations of each, and then just some macros and add-ons that you can use to help yourself out. Now I'll go ahead and start by talking about the Astral Power system that we have, and it's pretty simple. You have some spells that you cast that give you Astral Power, and others that spend it. In addition, it caps out at 100, so at 100 you can't generate any more Astral Power until you use some up. Well, the first two spells I'm going to go over are Moonfire and Sunfire. Very basic, they are damage over time or dot spells. You just cast them and you get a little bit of damage over time. As you can see with Moonfire, is a single target one. Now, Sunfire is very similar, but as you can see, it can actually apply to things within a certain range around it. So it's the same kind of dot, a bit shorter as well but it does apply in an AoE area around, so you can hit multiple things with Sunfire. Next up, we have Solar Wrath. It's a short cast time single target spell, generates eight Astral Power, a little bit more depending on your talents, but baseline eight, and it just casts and it generates some, some Astral Power for you, as you can see there. And then we've got Lunar Strike. It's a bit of a longer cast, it's a bit more damage, but it also cleaves enemies in the immediate area, and it does, it generates 12 Astral Power, baseline. Again, I have a talent that makes it do more, so as you can see, it does hit multiple targets if they're close enough. Finally, for Astral Power Generation, we have our Artifact ability, our Moon Spells, and this is on a 3 charge system with a 15 second recharge, but every time you cast it, it changes. So it starts at New Moon, which you can see is a very, very fast cast, generates 10 Astral Power. Then it upgrades to Half Moon, which is a bit longer, it generates 20 Astral Power and does a bit more damage. And then finally it goes to Full Moon, which is a much longer cast, and it generates 40 Astral Power, and then it hits everything in an area. So this is actually an AoE one, but it doesn't do more damage to more targets, it just splits the damage over all the targets it hits. And then as you can see, it goes back to New Moon. So it kind of cycles like that. Now as far as spending Astral Power goes, you have a couple options. The first is Star Surge which as you can see costs 40 astral power, it's an instant spell, and it just shoots this cool little energy ball at the target, and it does a good amount of damage. Now it also gives you a couple buffs called Solar Empowerment and Lunar Empowerment, and these make your, your Solar Wrath and your Lunar Strike do more damage on their next cast, and it does have a pretty long duration. So every time you use Star Surge, as you can see, it will actually generate another charge, and these go up to three. So you can have up to three of these, and after that you're kind of wasting charges. Now the other way you can spend Astral Power is through Starfall. And so Starfall does generate enough Astral Power here. It costs 60 Astral Power by default, and you just cast it in an area. As you can see, you kind of pick where it goes, and it just does this cool AoE. and also applies something called Stellar Empowerment, which means that the enemies inside it take more damage from your dots, your Moonfire and Sunfire. As far as DPS cooldowns go, we only have one. It's Celestial Alignment, and it's on a 3 minute cooldown. Very simple, it increases the damage you do for 15 seconds, and also makes it so that your Solar Wrath and Lunar Strike generate 50% more Astral Power, so you're going to be generating more Astral Power with those two spells during the duration of that cooldown. Very simple, very straightforward. In terms of utility, we do have an Interrupt in Solar Beam, 1 minute cooldown, kind of an AoE effect. It interrupts and silences enemies in that area, looks something like that, and it has a one minute cooldown, so it lasts for eight seconds. We also have a heal in regrowth, you just cast it, and it puts a, it does a good amount of healing up front, and then a small heal over time on the target. We also have roots, entangling roots, if you need to CC something, very simple, you cast on an enemy, boom, it's rooted, and then we've got innervate. Now innervate is quite useful in raids, or Dungeons, but mostly raids especially. Uh, it's got a 3 minute cooldown, and basically you can only cast it on healers, so people who are specced as healers, and they get to cast for free, no mana cost, for 10 seconds. So very, very cool, very potent cooldown to help them be inefficient and pump out maximum heals in a time that they need it. In addition, we do have a defensive cooldown called Darkskin. A 1 minute cooldown, 20% less damage that you take, and you can use it while CC'd in various ways. And that's pretty much what we have as far as 
balanced druid abilities go. We do have other stuff, of course, involving different shapeshift forms, like we can dash, but as you can see, it turns us into a cat. It just makes you run really fast, though, if you need to go somewhere. And we can look at other stuff as well, like Prowl, going Stealth. We have Rebirth, which is really cool. It's a battle res, 10 minute cooldown, instant, and you res somebody who is dead. And there's all sorts of other stuff, like in bear form or cat form, that you can do. But I'm not really going to go over that right now, because they're not super, super relevant to what most of what we're doing. So you could go into, for example, bear form, and then you have things like Mangle and Thrash. But we do also have one more spell. I'd like to mention that is Remove Corruption. It's your spell. It removes curse and poison effects if you need to do that, but it does take you out of Moon Conform. So let's go ahead and talk about your talents now. Now, level 15, I recommend Star Lord from pretty much every situation. It makes your lunar and solar empowerments reduce the cast time of the affected spells by 20%, so it just allows you to cast faster. It's a nice constant benefit. It actually does help you in movement because you can sometimes get one of those casts off because it's a bit quicker. But you can mess around with the other two if you really want to. The Force of Nature is kind of a nice one minute cooldown. Summon some trees in a little circle area and they do damage and they taunt stuff. So it can be really useful if you need to say taunt things in a mythic dungeon. Maybe like Skittish is happening or Necrotic so you can kind of pull off your tank. That could be pretty useful. And then Warrior Valoon, just not super great right now. It just makes your next three Lunar Strikes instant on a 45 second cooldown, and it's a little underwhelming as far as performance goes. You could mess around with it maybe with Fury of Balloon, but generally recommend Star Lord. Force of Nature also don't generally recommend, but again, if you need the taunt, it can be really, really effective. Level 30, kind of up to you. Basically, I recommend either Displace the Beast for movement or Renewal for survivability. Displace the Beast just shoots you forward like so and turns you into a cat, so do be aware that you need to switch back to Moon Conform at some point. And it's really cool, and it does increase your movement speed briefly. So very nice for getting out of mechanics. Renewal, one and a half minute cooldown, heals you for a significant portion of your health, pretty simple. And then Wild Charge, I don't, don't really recommend. I think Displace of Beast gives you more control over where you're going, and it's just kind of generally more useful, but it's kind of up to you what you want in this tier. Level 45, I generally recommend Restoration Affinity, especially for progression. It gives you a nice self-heal. You get Swift Men, which is pretty useful for kind of spot healing either yourself or the people if you really need to in a raid. If you don't like that for whatever reason, you could take Guardian Affinity would be my other recommendation. It doesn't heal you or keep you up as much as Resto Affinity, but it does reduce the damage you take by 6%, which is pretty cool. The other active ability is not super useful versus Resto Affinity, and you'd have to take a lot of damage in a short period of time to kind of make up for the ability to heal yourself passively and swift bend and such but you know it's there if you like it and then feral affinity if you really must have that movement speed you know you can you can mess around with it but i don't really recommend it versus the other two in progression content especially where there's a lot of aoe and unavoidable damage it's kind of underwhelming versus the other two but again here it's not really relevant to your dps too too much so kind of up to you but i do recommend resto affinity when possible Level 60 is all CC, completely up to you. Mighty Bash is a single target stun. Mass Entanglement, AoE Root, 30 second cooldown. And then Typhoon is a knockback. So kind of what you need and what you're interested in and what your raid leader calls for, party leader. And then at 75, generally recommend Incarnation. Chosen a Balloon for most situations. It buffs your Celestial Alignment and makes it do a little bit more, so you get 35% extra damage instead of 30%. You still get the same Astral Power generation buff to your Solar Wrath and Lunar Strike, but it also lasts twice as long as Celestial Alignment, so instead of 15 seconds, it's 30 seconds, which makes it really, really potent, especially when lined up with other cooldowns and stuff. If you need huge AoE, like really big, heavy AoE, Soul of the Forest is really, really good for that. It does increase the damage bonus from your Lunar and Solar Empowerment, which is from Star Surge. When you cast Star Surge, it kind of buffs these two spells, Lunar Strike, Solar Wrath. But it also reduces the Astral Power cost of Starfall by 20, making it 40 instead of 60. So it's the same as Star Surge, which means you get to cast a lot more Starfalls when you take this talent. So it makes it really, really good for AoE. Now, as far as Stellar Flare goes, it's a casted dot 
costs 10 astral power, and you can apply it to whatever. It does benefit from Starfall's stellar empowerment, so if you happen to have these Bracer legendaries, which give you a chance to proc random Starfalls, you could use this potentially and use it when you actually get a free Starfall. But even then, you could probably make an argument for Incarnation, especially with that just big on-demand burst. So in general, I recommend Incarnation for most single target and light AoE fights, and then Soul of the Forest for big, heavy, constant AoE. Level 90, kind of a similar story here. I recommend Blessing of the Ancients while using Blessing of a Loon most of the time for single target, and it just increases the astral power you generate through Solar Wrath and Lunar Strike by a little bit. So that's why I have 10 astral power from Solar Wrath instead of 8, and 15 from Lunar Strike instead of the baseline 12. So it's just kind of a constant extra astral power generation thing, which is very, very nice to have. And then for AoE, kind of long term or constant AoE, Shooting Stars is really good, gives your dots a chance to do a little extra damage, calls on like a little star, and it also generates astral power randomly, so it can be really, really nice for that. So the longer, the more ads there are, and the more dots you have rolling, and the longer they're up, the better this gets, versus Blessing of the Ancients. And then Astral Communion, you can do the math on it with the cooldown and, you know, how much astral power it generates, versus Blessing of the Ancients for single target, it just doesn't quite line up. It is good if you're using Fury of Loon for that burst astral power, but other than that, I don't really recommend it right now. At level 100, I recommend Nature's Balance for single target, and it just makes it so that your Solar Wrath and your Lunar Strike abilities extend the duration of your dots, your Moonfire and Sunfire on the targets. It makes it so that your Solar Wrath will actually extend the duration of all of your Sunfires every time you cast it, and Lunar Strike will extend the duration of your Moonfire when you cast it. So it kind of allows you to not spend as many global cooldowns casting those dots over and over as they run out of time. But the more targets you get, the better Stella Drift gets. And this basically just busts your Starfall. Makes it bigger, do more damage. And so when you're using Starfall a lot, I recommend this talent versus Nature's Balance. And then Fury of a Loon is a really cool spell. One and a half minute cooldown and it costs a little bit of Astral Power and it sucks away 12 Astral Power per second. And just calls down a big laser beam, essentially. It's not huge, though. You can see the area. Well, let me generate a little bit of astral power here. But you can see the area is quite small. But it just calls down a laser beam, and it keeps going there. And you can reposition it. But because the area is so small, if the ads move constantly, or you have to move while you're trying to keep this astral power up while it's sucking it away, it can be pretty ineffective. If you already know what you're doing, you really love it, and you, you want to keep playing with it for multi-target, you totally can. In general, though, I recommend Nature's Balance for single target, Stellar Drift for whenever you use Starfall, so mostly multi-target, and those are just a lot easier to use as well. But it definitely has its place if you kind of want to mess around with that. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at your artifact traits and pathing choices. So we start up here, recommend going up, grabbing Power of Goldrin, pretty straightforward, and it just makes you do more damage. And you'll also along the way get a Stellar Empowerment buff for your Starfall kind of dot buff your solar beam if you interrupt the target you've targeted with it then you actually get a 45 second cooldown instead of a one minute cooldown very nice and kind of nice little stealth here when you take damage so kind of useless but kind of nice to have at the same time dps wise it's not so great after that grab dark of the moon crit strike chance of lunar strike up your damage buffs to your two dots moon fire and sunfire and then your second golden trait Moon and Stars, during your cooldown, Incarnation, or Celestial Alignment, you get 1% haste per cast that you get off, so it just makes you go faster and faster in your cooldown, which makes you do a lot more damage. After that, grab Scythe of the Stars, increases the crit strike chance of Star Surge, and then probably grab Sunblind at this point. And I didn't used to recommend this, but because there's a lot of fights in Nighthold that have ads that are a little bit spread out, Having this extra 5-yard splash range on Sunfire can be really powerful, so you don't have to keep spending globals on you know, casting Sunfire over and over. But if you don't, if you think you can do fine without it, you can grab that later, but it is quite useful. After that, definitely grab Solar Stabbing, and you'll get Rapid Innovation along the way. Uh, it just makes it so that Innovate gives 10% haste to the target, and then Solar Stabbing just does more Solar Wrath damage. 
And at this point in Nine Hole, I do recommend grabbing Echoing Stars next, because every time Starfall does damage, this golden trait allows just makes it do a little damage to other enemies. So it's like more splash damage from your Starfall, and you do use Starfall quite a bit in Nighthold, so this is actually quite relevant and quite nice to have. And then at that point, you could probably grab Empowerment, which just increases the damage bonus from your two Empowerments, your Lunar and Solar one from Star Surge, and then finish up with this really awful and useless trait that just gives you more armor in Moonkin form. Now as far as relics go, it kind of depends on what you're looking for. So your relics and your traits, as you can see, and I've probably seen, are kind of divided into like single target and AoE. So if you're looking for more single target, Scythe of the Stars is your most potent single target, followed by Solar Stabbing, because Solar Wrath is a large part of your single target rotation, and then Dark Southern Moon to buff your Lunar Strike crit chance. Now after that, you could probably grab like Empowerment or maybe one of the two dots would be decent for single target, but not great. So for single target, Scythe, Solar Stabbing, and then Dark Side of the Moon are kind of your one, two, sec first, second, and third choices relic-wise. And for kind of multi-target, you're going to want more Falling Star, which buffs your Stellar Empowerment, so that's your Starfall buffing your dots. And then, of course, your two dots, which are really, really important, so buffing the damage of Moonfire and Sunfire are really good to have if you want to focus on AoE. And then at that point, after that, you could look at Lunar Strike Crit Chance, because that's kind of what you spam and we'll get into that in the rotation section, but that's what you spam more during an AoE rotation. So after that, you know, you could pick up anything that does more damage. So Solar Stabbing is pretty decent, you know, Scythe of the Stars, pretty cool. But generally more Falling Star, and then the dots are kind of higher priority. So kind of up to what you need and what you want in your weapon. Now let's go ahead and talk about stat priority. So Haste is going to be your top in general, followed by Mastery. And what Mastery does is it buffs the damage of your Starfall, Star Surge, and all three of your empowerments. So your Lunar, Solar, and Stellar empowerments by a good amount. So this is a really good stat, along with Haste. And then after that, the other two are just kind of together at the bottom. Now, as with most classes, I imagine that you don't want to actually just go all in on one stat. You actually do want to have them all kind of come up together. Not necessarily equally, but just don't go all in on Haste, for example, and get like I don't know if you can, but if you've got like 50% haste or something ridiculous, they probably start losing out in value to other stats. So don't forsake, you know, an upgrade that is a significant eye level, so like intellect and another stat upgrade. Even if you lose some haste, it's probably still good. But the best way to know is to simulate yourself and use something like Simulation Craft to kind of get an idea of what stats are really good for you right now. But in general, you can go with haste, then mastery, and then the other two. So as far as DPS goes, the DPS rotation, I'll start with single target. The concept is pretty simple. You're just going to apply your two dots. Most of the time you want to keep up your moon fire and sun fire. You want to use your moon spells to generate astral power. And then after that, if they're on cooldown, then you can use solar wrath and lunar strike to generate astral power. Now, in general, you're going to be using solar wrath if you've got no empowerments up. But once you've dumped some of your astral power through star surge, which is the only thing you'll be using on single target, to use Astral Power, then you will have the Empowered Solar Wrath and Empowered Lunar Strike, and you do want to use those Empowered spells when possible. You just never want to cap on them, you never want to waste charges, so just make sure you are using those before they get to 3, or if they're at 3, do not Star Surge until you've used them, because your Mastery does buff that and makes them really, really potent. Now. As far as if everything's on cooldown, so you've got no moon spells, right? you can't cast Star Surge yet because you don't have enough astral power, and not, neither of these are empowered, go ahead and just spam Solar Wrath until you can cast Star Surge again. But generally, use empowerments when you have them. And that's pretty much the whole concept behind it. The cooldown is pretty simple, you just got to keep an eye on your astral power so you don't overcap, never go over 100, never waste astral power like that. And then use this as much as possible, or line it up during you know important phases, of course, in a fight. Now, as far as the opener goes, you'll be pre-potting and then pre-casting Solar Wrath, and then if you happen to be on New Moon, pre -ca you cast New Moon as well before you put your dots on. It's just another global that's really quick, and it's actually faster than the global, but you want to get that out of the way before you apply your dots so you don't have to worry about your dot duration during your cooldown. And then pop Incarnation or Celestial Alignment, depending on what you're using, but generally you should be using this for single target. And then use your two new moon spells, 
you know, half moon, full moon, and then, you know, star surge, and then kind of use your empowerments up and kind of do the rotation from that. So it'll look something like this, and I'll go ahead and show you guys for a little bit. So precast, I won't use a pot, but precast solar wrath, and I'm not on new moon, so I'll go ahead and apply my dots instead. Pop this cooldown, full moon, new moon, half moon, even though it says new moon, two star surges, and just start using these empowerments. Now, I like to rotate them, that's just me, kind of weird. It doesn't really matter as long as you use them before you know, they reach the cap, so you have some freedom in how you cast these. It's just the way I've kind of gotten used to it. But again, you could just do like Solar Wrath, Solar Wrath, you know, Lunar Strike, Lunar Strike. I like it because it keeps the dots active a little more often, or a little better, a little more rotationally, if you will. Because, you know, then you're buffing the duration of your Moonfire, and then Sunfire, and then Moonfire, and Sunfire. But it kind of looks up to you, so I just kind of rotate these. Use my new Moon spell when it's up. Now here I have to reapply Solar Ra or Sunfire, excuse me, because it did fall off, and it will eventually. So you will, even with the Nature's Balance talent, kind of have to refresh your dots every so often. But you can see, you just use the Moon spell when it's there, use the Empowerments, and then Star Surge when you have over 40. Now here I don't have enough, and I have nothing, so I'll just use an Unempowered Solar Wrath to get me to 40. Cast this Empowered Lunar Strike, and then Full Moon. And so you do have some freedom in the rotation again. It just make sure you don't cap your empowered spells at three, or try to use it when you have three already. And then just use your new moon spell, so don't let those sit too, too long. Of course, if you need to save it for something, you can a little bit, but again, do not let your moon charges sit there at three. This is kind of the basic rotation. You just keep doing this over and over. So use the empowered spells. Oh, I don't have enough, so I'll cast you know, a couple Solar Wraths, get the Star Surge off, now I have a moon spell, Solar Wrath. Lunar Strike, because they're empowered, and then I've got Star Search, so I'll use that. And it helps to do a little bit, be able to do a little bit of mental math as you look at your astral power, knowing how much you're going to generate, how much astral power you generate, and how much you need to cast Star Search. So being able to do that can help you not waste like half a global as you cancel a spell as you realize, oh wait, I do have enough to cast Star Search and stuff like that. So that's kind of the basic idea there. You just want to keep your dots rolling, whether it's through Nature's Balance or just reapplying them when they fall off. Use your moon spells as much as possible to generate astral power. Use star surge when it's when you're ready to go. And you don't again, you don't have to do it right away because you've got time, depending on using your like empowered spells or using star surge as long as you don't overcap. So you do have some freedom in how you do it. I just got used to doing it kind of flipping them back and forth like Solar Wrath and the Lunar Strike kind of thing. But that's totally up to you. You can definitely get away with doing you know, two solar, two solar Wraths in a row, two Lunar Strikes in a row, if you happen to have two Empowerments, things like that. Now, the AoE rotation is pretty similar, so you just keep your dots up, Moonfire and Sunfire on as many targets as possible, and I will recommend up to three targets, maybe four, you can do Moonfire as well. The Sunfire is very simple, right? If they're in range, you press it once, pff, hits everyone, boom, easy. Moonfire, you have to single target and actually apply it to everyone, so it can take several globals for that. Three, maybe four at the most. After that, just do Sunfire and don't worry about Moonfire. But basically, apply those dots. Use your Moon spells to generate Astral Power, because they still have really good Astral Power generation per cast time. And then to fill, use generally Lunar Strike. If you're doing three or more targets, you're probably not going to be Star Surging very often, and instead you're going to be using Starfall. So you're not going to get that empowerment, those Solar Wrath and Lunar Strike empowerments. So you don't have to worry about that too much, just Lunar Strike, three or more targets is pretty solid to do. And then just Starfall to spend your Astral Power. If you're doing two targets, just a quick mention, Solar Wrath is still kind of your go-to to generate Astral Power. So if you're doing just two targets, you know, keep your dots up, use the same rotation, just do use your Empowerments if you use the Star Surge, etc. But in general, for AoE, Lunar Strike, especially at three or more targets, is probably just stronger overall. So I'm going to be using these talents, and you can mix and match sometimes, depending on what you feel like is good for the fight. But this is kind of your basic AoE setup. So you apply dots to everything as much as you can. So Sunfire probably first, so you can get those dots ticking. And then apply Moonfire. Two different things, and of course, depending on the opening rotation, you could change how that goes, right? Depending on like popping cooldowns, same way. But then you just do Starfall, and then you know Lunar Strike, and we got Full Moon, so let's go ahead and use that. And then we can put you know multiple Star Falls down, 
And then, you know, keep your dots rolling. So you want to reapply the dots. Starfall. Use Moon Spell. Got Lunar Strike to just fill. And kind of generate some Astral Power so we can Starfall again. And that's pretty much what you do. You just keep doing that. Keep your dots up as much as possible. Use Starfall when you can. And it's very, very simple, especially with these talents. It makes it easy to use Starfall over and over. Reapply your Moon Fires. Again, if there are few enough targets that you're not going to be spending all your time and as you can see, if you're in this thing, you can actually cast, which is pretty cool, and move around. But that's pretty much it for AoE. Very simple. You could, of course, prioritize your Lunar Strike and your Moon Spells on a priority target if there's like a boss or a mini boss and several adds together. can be very cool. Make sure you're targeting something that can hit other targets with your Lunar Strike, because it does have a pretty short range, 5-yard range around it. So just make sure you're taking advantage of that. And that's pretty much it. For AoE, so pretty simple. Just keep that Starfall going, keep your dots rolling, do the same kind of astral power generation priority, moon spells into generally lunar strike, and that's just about it. Now, of course, during your celestial alignment, once again, just make sure you're not spending or over capping your astral power, use it as much as possible. That's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, feel free to hit it with a like, and if you want to see when I post new stuff or just new videos like this, then feel free to subscribe to the channel so you know when new content comes out from me. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those either in the comments section below, or you can come into my stream at twitch.tv and just kind of say hi, drop in, and ask a quick question if you like. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and find it helpful. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.